So complex numbers. Now what we're looking at is imaginary and complex numbers. So just the, the start of the FP1 course. Now for this, the first thing we kind of, in terms of skills we need, is we need to be able to work with thirds. So if I think of, you know, a third like the square root of 50, and then I want to simplify this, I'll be looking at 2 times 25. When I'm splitting it up, I need one of these factors to be a square number. Okay, and then I've got square root of 2 times square root of 25, which is square root of 2 times 5, or 2 root 5. Now obviously I've taken a lot of extra steps there, um, but it's not really really necessary to do that many steps um, and that's the kind of skill that you need to be able to deal with imaginary and complex numbers so what are they so let's just essentially an ima imaginary number i is the square root of negative one um, because it's a negative number, we can't think of two numbers that will ever multiply to give it a negative number. Because two positive numbers multiply together is positive, two negatives multiplied together is negative. Okay, so this imaginary number is not a real number. Imaginary number is the square root of minus one. Often in the form of bi, where b is a real number. And then we look at complex numbers. Our complex number is a mixture of uh, like a, a real number part and a imaginary number part. Okay, so this would be, you know, uh, a real number would, uh, sorry, a complex number would be A plus BI, where A and B are both real numbers okay so what we'll do first is just deal with imaginary and then we'll start looking at the complex so if I have the square root of minus 36 um, clearly I can't do this by my normal methods so I need to think of splitting it up and I need to think of this imaginary number square root of minus 1 so if I think of splitting this up, I can split it up into 36 times negative 1. And then splitting that up is the square root of 36 times the square root of negative 1. Now, the square root of 36 is 6, and the square root of negative 1 is i. Okay, so minus 36, square root of minus 36 is 6i. Okay, where i is the square root of minus 1. Okay, have a look at another one. Minus root 28. Again, I want to split this up. So I'm just going to do 28 times negative 1. Okay, and in this case I'll take a couple of extra little steps. Just, well, less steps. So square root of 28 can be written as... 2 root 7 and the square root of minus 1 is i okay um, and that's all there is to it converting from a negative inside my square root into the form as an imaginary number here's some for you to try um, if you pause the video now Give them a go and then check the answers afterwards. Okay, I'm going to go through the answers. Just put them in. So we've got 3i, 7i, 11i and 100i. And we've got 15i root 5i 
10 root 2 i and 7 root 3 i. It's worth stating at this point that it's often useful to put a little bracket in where you have a square root just to, to make it obvious okay so it's just something that's useful when you're doing this now complex numbers <coughs> are what I was saying where they were real and imaginary numbers together so for example if I had 2 plus 5i this is a complex number as 2 is the real part and then this 5i is the imaginary part. Okay, and what I can do is I can deal with these adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing and so on. But we're looking at just adding and subtracting them today. Uh, nice and straightforward. So if I've got 2 plus 5i, and I want to add to that, let's go with 7 plus 3i. What I need to do is I need to add the two real parts separately from the two imaginary parts. So in this case, the 2 plus 7 is going to give me... 9. Okay, so that's my 2 plus 7. Then when I'm looking at the imaginary parts, you know, I'm looking at this 5i and I'm looking at this 3i. So I've got my 5i plus 3i, so that's going to give me a positive 8i. Okay, and that's all there is to it. You know, it's dead easy you know and the same if you're taking away just subtracting the numbers uh, very much the same even if you say we're dividing second one that you know if i had say uh, 10 plus 6 i simplify i just want to divide both parts by two so i'm thinking of 10 over 2 plus the 6 i over 2 so 5 plus 3i. Okay, and as I was saying, if I was taken away, um, let's do 2, 5 minus 8i minus 3 plus 4i. So something like this, I want to expand the bracket first. So I've got 10 minus 16i, and then I'm essentially taking away my 3, taking away my minus 4. So it might be easier to get rid of this. Uh, so, so I've got 10 minus 3, so I'm looking at 7, and minus 16i and minus 4i is going to be minus 20i. Here are a few questions for you to do. It's just simplify them and write them in the form of A plus B I. Okay. Um, question four, just think about the thirds and how you would have dealt with them when you were doing your IGCSEs and you should be okay. Here are the answers to the first four there. Um, and don't forget there are more questions in, a, in your textbook if you want to to do some other ones. Here are the rest of the answers for those questions and as I said there are more questions to try in exercise 1a in your further pure one books.